I am Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 14 in Leipzig, Germany, and we're here at the Intel booth, and we're here to see something very special in the area of computational genomics. Is that what uh, we're seeing? Well, computational biology, you could call it. So what, what you see in here, and this is what we simulated in our group in Göttingen, yeah. is uh, the ribosome. And this thing is uh, what um, well, every one of us has, all bacteria has, all life has. And so this translates or is involved in the translation of genetic information into protein. So you have all this genetic code sitting in your cell somewhere and needs to do something, so you need to make proteins from it. And in this thing here, you have the uh, genetic information transferred by something called messenger RNA. This sits let me look, somewhere around in here. Yeah. And then you have a peptide chain coming out of the thing. This is what it produces. Sure. Yes. And then there's a two other molecules involved in here in this structure and you see these in purple coming up here. Mm. These are called so-called transfer RNAs yes. and what they do is they translate the genetic information sitting on this messenger RNA uh, so really yeah. tiny that's why it's hard to see oh, yeah. uh, but it's modeled in there um, uh -huh. translating this into amino acids and what we're looking at through our computer simulations is how these purple things um, move through the ribosome and how they do so very efficiently. So what you see here mm -hmm. is in this whole ribosome complex where you see like proteins yes. in blue and RNA and yeah. um, red over here. So this really tightly packs around these um, molecules and then they have to be very efficient in getting through this really tightly packed space. Okay. And, so, and, uh, and is the goal here something to do with like drug delivery or, or, or are you uh, just trying to learn the mechanics of how this works? So, well, first of all, of yes. course we try to get new insight and just be curious about how life works in general. Yes, so yes. this is okay. uh, the very first point. Then of yep. course um, you can imagine all kinds of medical applications. I mean yeah. drug design is a one big point here in uh, that if you have antibiotics that target the ribosome and you understand how they work this might help yeah. making better antibiotics and also understanding the key differences of what you see here yes. is the bacterial ribosome. Mm -hmm. This is in the bacteria. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you understand the key differences to a human ribosome, you might also understand how to kill one but not the other. Uh, so how yeah. to give you a drug that kills the bacteria inside of you but not you. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, this yeah. is one of the goals of the thing. That's the issue. Yeah. What you can also uh, what you see here is uh, just a um, an abstract representation of all the parts that make up this ribosome. Yes. So when we simulate the whole thing and look yeah. at the movements of the parts, so this is 2.2 million atoms. And just to give you a glimpse, we can just uh, move in here oh, yeah. and you see all these um, blue ribbons, for example. Yes. And now if we look over to the left side, you now we overlay ribbons, Yeah. these ribbons with uh, the actual atom representations. Okay. So you see of how many atoms the whole ribosome is made of. And, um, Were you able to do uh, you know, a collection of atoms that large just a few years ago? Was that even possible? Um, yeah, it was possible. Uh, so I think the first ribosome simulation started in something like 2003, 2005. Yeah. But not for such a long simulation time. So you mm. can just do a very tiny step. Yeah. And what okay. we yeah. can do now is like full movements. So also um, transitions from one state where can I sit like that to another yeah. state where they sit like uh, that. Yeah. And this was uh, not possible um, so long ago. All right. So now we're going to switch gears here and learn about the computational science behind this. So, so what does it take to, to run a simulation like this? Is this a lot of cores involved? Or? So we have uh, over to uh, my right yeah. a 15-node cluster. Uh, this is the first public demonstration of the Intel uh, Xeon E5 2600 V3 codenamed Haswell chip. Uh, and we're running a molecular dynamics simulation on 12 of those nodes, side by side with uh, the visualization and rendering that you're seeing here yes. on two nodes. Okay. And the visualization is actually running on Xeon 5. And uh, what you're seeing here is uh, real-time interactive ray tracing. So we're doing ray tracing on the fly of output from the GROMAP simulation uh, entirely on uh, the Xeon Phi coprocessor. That kind of interactivity, how does that help like a, a researcher? I mean, So the ability to spin the molecule and zoom in and zoom out makes it possible to understand sort of what's happening and what the shape of this three-dimensional structure is, right? Yeah. So we have this issue that we're looking at three-dimensional structures on two-dimensional displays and trying to understand shape and how a drug might fit into a, a particular crevice. Uh, it's necessary to be able to rotate the molecule, zoom in and zoom out. Yeah, yeah. 
And I was going to ask you, but did this code go through some kind of code modernization to, to, to take advantage of, of the, the many core? Uh, yes. So uh, this is actually based on our Embry ray tracing kernels. These yeah. are open source kernels for high performance ray tracing that are very finely optimized yeah. for Xeon and Xeon 5 processors. So they're designed to take full advantage of the, the, the compute capability that we have in this cluster. Okay. And, and, and as far as, you know, uh, it, it didn't take a super large supercomputer, it didn't take a super muck to do this, you're doing this right here in the booth. That, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and it shows some scalability. We yeah. have some room to run as you add more nodes to your compute cluster and you want to use some of those to do visualization, mm -hmm. again, alongside maybe a computational uh, simulation, you can do that. So you can scale this viz as large as you need it.